Hello, good morning. So I think you guys can hear me, right? Just let me know am I audible and is the screen is visible? If you're having or if you're facing any issues, please check your internet connectivity and also the internet connection and your devices. Okay. Uh, give me one second. Hello, good morning. Yes, I'm just checking the uh, audio. Okay. So, okay, great. I think you guys can hear me, right? So uh, we are studying the biotechnology and uh, actually we completed biotechnology the process chapter that means what are the process involved in a biotechnology, right? In this particular class, uh, we will study more about like uh, what are the applications of the biotechnology, okay? It may take two days of time, that means uh, today and the next week, uh, Saturday, okay? So uh, for the information, I just wanted to tell now only like uh, tomorrow, sorry, next week you will be having one chapter test regarding the biotechnology first chapter, so be ready, okay? So we'll start the class guys without wasting any time, okay? So before starting the class, uh, we'll see one question. The question is very simple. The first transgenic crop was Stratovica, yes, okay. Which is the plant or which particular plant we actually first use the genetic engineering to create? Is it a tobacco, cotton, pea, or a flax? What is the correct answer? I'm giving you 30 seconds of time. Try to answer as soon as possible. So what is the correct answer? Okay. You, you can guess because uh, if you study, uh, if you've heard the biotechnology chapter already, so it will be easy to answer. Otherwise, you just have to take a guess. Okay. Okay, time is over. Uh, the correct, like, think about tea. Is it tea, flax, or cotton, or tobacco? The simple, like, which one will create first, right? So, which particular um, plant we needed first? It's not about the food. Sometimes people go for a different extent for cash crops. Okay, cash crops are the one which you grow it for the cash, not for the food. Okay, so those are called cash crops, right? We majorly concerned about cash crops than the food crops initially, right? When we started the at least. Okay, so the first transgenic crop created by tobacco because tobacco is affected by several diseases and tobacco have a very good value. Okay, that's why uh, we started with the tobacco one. Okay, correct answer is tobacco. So we'll go to the next one then. There's, there's another question is there. Okay, uh, yeah. Match the organism with its use in biotechnology. Okay, you have to match the organism with its use in biotechnology. Okay, the first uh, so the options will see Bacillus thuringiensis, Thermus aquaticus, Cyberbacterium coefficient, Salmonella typhimidium. Uh, this side will be cloning vector construction of first RDNA molecule, DNA polymerase, cryoprobin. Okay, so this question asked in NEET 2020. Okay, the question is simple. So I'm again giving you some time for you guys to answer. Okay, as I mentioned, if you are attending from the schools, keep one of your classmate or the class leader in front of the laptop or a projector. Okay, so he can answer in the chat box. Okay, so I'm just waiting for your answer. This is simple. Yes. Okay. Okay, I go. Okay, let's see. Okay, so I have bacillus thuringiensis. Okay, we are going start to study that. Thermus hepaticus, cyclobacterium tumefaciens, salmonella typhimidium. I think you heard, at least in the last chapter, we heard about thermus hepaticus and cyclobacterium tumefaciens, right? And salmonella. You know, why we use the thermus hepaticus? Thermus, is it for cloning vector? Is it for construction? Or is it for DNA polymerase? Or is it a cry protein? Yes, thermus aquaticus used for to extract a polymerase called TAC polymerase, which is used in the PCR technique, right? That means option B is three. Remember, whenever the match the following question comes, go with something you're 100% sure of, okay? The 100% sure, there is no other options are there. Then try to find the way, okay? B to three, check here where B to three is there, option B, B to three is there, so B is the answer. Right. Look, even though you don't know the matching for the other things, you can answer within less time. So, match the following. 
you can't make everything as sweet that, that will take a lot of time so go with one thing which you are 100 sure of then you match it in this case thermos aquatic is a dna polymerase b3 i can see here right where there is only one option with a b3 that's the b option and directly going there correct kushi right so correct answer is b right so this how if you are doing like this you can save the time right you can instead of answering in like uh, one minute or one minute and second you can answer within the 20 seconds okay it will save that much of time every second matters in it okay correct answer we'll go to the next part then right first when we talk, talk about the biotechnological application in the agriculture process okay so why we are using or what we are using okay those things matters in biotechnology sorry in agriculture we use biotechnology for three important steps okay one is for the agrochemicals okay formation of the agrochemicals that means insecticides weedicide okay or pesticides formation of those things okay or using it in the organic agriculture okay using in the organic agriculture okay or third one will use it in the genetically engineered crops one second let me erase some of the things genetically engineered crops so you have these three method to increase the food production okay to increase the food production okay we'll see the different scenario think about using the agrochemicals okay if you use the agrochemicals what happens when you are using the agrochemicals it will again dangerous for the environment right it's not a good for environment so you have to use it less what about the organic agriculture if you use the organic agriculture it seems good sustainable and all but the issues like organic agriculture normally affected by a lot of first insect all those kind of things so what is the in between then we need to give more productivity we should have more productivity with less loss right so and it should be easy then our genetically engineered crops will come here okay so when the green revolution happened i think everyone of you know what is the meaning of green revolution right after our after our independence okay our uh or the population is booming that means increasing like anything but we don't have the food to, to arrange all the uh sorry arrange food for all these people okay then we thought of initiating a moment where we increase the food production in a higher range okay so in this particular green revolution what happened is like initially green revolution are associated with all this agrochemicals and all but in few years by looking at the the disadvantage of the agrochemicals and other things so practices we come to a solution or conclusion that genetically engineered crops are much better to increase the productivity without causing any harm okay there we come across with the our gmos or i can say that genetically modified organisms okay genetically modified organism in a simple term i will say that genetically modified organisms are something where the organism or the host organism have the genes from the other than their organism right think about uh any crop i think about there is a plant okay i added a gene okay i added a gene which is a gene taken from the fireflies you know fireflies right they will emit the light right think about i removed the fireflies that gene okay which gives the light and add it into the plant now the plant is colorful okay light green so there's a gmo that means any organism which have the genes from the outside is called genetically modified organism or transgenic organism okay so what are the advantages of gmo actually we are seeing these gmo crops are tolerant to abiotic stress so they can sustain in a very cold drought or salt and heat condition we can make it like that and we can rely less on the chemical pesticides to create a chemical sorry 
resistance insecticide insect resistance plant okay and we can also increase the post harvest losses so sorry we can also decrease the post harvest loss that means after your harvesting some of the fruits all the things will go back we can try to decrease it okay and we can also increase the efficiency of mineral usage okay so what happens plants need a higher amount of minerals okay to get into it even though it's not utilizing it if you give a very less amount of minerals then the plants will die so this kind of technology is very important if you are growing plants in the barren lands or the plants where minerals are comparatively less okay and the fifth one is the nutritional value of the food we can increase the nutritional value of the food to uh, to counteract the hidden hunger okay for in a simple term i can say that hidden hunger means the stomach is full okay think about like you are eating only rice nothing else okay only rice you are eating okay then what happens is your stomach is empty are you feeling any hungerness no your stomach is full you feel full only okay but does your body getting all the nutrition no right no so hidden hunger means your body not getting nutrition because you don't have anything okay you haven't eaten anything okay hidden hunger means you are full you don't feel hungry but you are not your body not getting enough nutrition okay so when you see the uh, developing the countries okay that uh, underdeveloped countries normally have the hungerness problem okay they don't have anything to eat and the developing countries have hidden hunger that means they do have food to eat but they don't have the enough nutrition to sustain the body of the children or the people okay normally the deficiency will happen in the protein because protein available foods will be comparatively costlier than the carbohydrate available foods think about milk think about meat think about egg or think about what else um, dal and all right so what happens in all this case and all uh, uh, fat in the oils right in all the five cases comparatively much costlier right and uh, it's like giving it's not like as a major food this will be act like some other part right think about like uh, taking the rice one kg rice it will cost like government only give the free rice or like one kilo rupees rice or you will get it outside for like 25 30 rupees also one kg rice okay but think about one kg dal it will cost around like 80 rupees 100 rupees 120 rupees right so a person who is having a very less money then normally go for the rice rather than going for a dal because he need to fill the stomach he never think about the nutritional value of the food right so that is called as the hidden hunger we can contract the hidden hunger to increase the nutritional value of a food is something like a golden rice yesterday i explained it i will explain it again in golden rice what we did is like we added vitamin a giving a uh, genes to the other rice so this particular rice are rich in vitamin a okay so which actually counteract the vitamin a deficiency which normally found in the the underdeveloped worlds okay so those are the major need of the gene okay so first in the gmo we will uh, study about bt cotton okay or pest resistant plants okay sorry insect resistant plants majorly we will study about the bt cotton okay what happens in a bt cotton what is the meaning of bt lot of student uh normally say if i ask what is bt cotton they will say that biotechnology okay i heard the same thing from not only uh, what is that uh from the strength even from lot of people also think that bt means biotechnology no that is not correct bt means bacillus thuringiensis thuringiensis okay so what is this then this is a kind of a bacteria which is actually feed or it create a kind of a protein which is actually harmful for the insect okay which is comparatively harmful so bacillus thuringiensis is the one which creates
So bacillus thuringiens is the one. What happens is like this protein kills some of the uh, insect or okay, some of the insect. Let me take our examples here. Okay, how it will kill or or the different things it will kill. Okay, this kill normally three different types of the insect. Okay, first one we can call it as the lepidopterans. Okay, remember I'm I'm not sure this is given in the book. Okay, so if it is possible, write it down or take a screenshot if you are using the mobile. Okay. First one is the lepidopterans. Okay, lepidopterans include so tobacco budworms, tobacco budworms, budworm, and army worms. Remember, if you are trying for the ICAR examination, you just have to remember all these things. Okay, so second one is coleopterans. This uh, again group of insect coleopterans these include beetles and the third major group is dipterans which contains flies and mosquitoes Okay, so he this particular BT cotton or the bacillus thuringiensis has the ability to kill all these different types of group of insect. Okay, that does not mean that it will kill everything, all the bacillus will create or you know, kill these things that we'll see in the later thing. Okay, as I said, BT cotton produces a toxin or in the form of this, think about this, the BT, okay, this is the BT, this is thuringiensis, okay, thuringiensis, it creates a toxin in the form of inactivated uh, toxin called as the protoxin, okay, it's called as the protoxin. This particular protoxin become activated toxin when it is kept in the alkaline pH, okay, when it is kept in the alkaline pH, okay, so those are the basic thing you just guys have to know. If I talk about this protoxin, this toxins are actually insect specific, whatever it creates, right, this toxins created by the specialist thuringiensis, that is insect group specific, insect group specific, insect group specific means what? As I said, there are different types of toxins are there. Some toxins only target lepidopterans. That means only these two kind of things. Some of them only target collecterans. Some of them only target the lepidopterans. Okay. So as I divide the cry genes, okay, or the, uh, the gene which is secret this toxin, that will be cry gene. Okay, the gene called um, cry. Cryogen have a two major, uh, sorry, three major types. Okay, what we divide. First is the cry one AC, and second one is cry two AB. Okay, so these are the one which is incorporated in the cotton, which normally, okay, so again as the, this normally again as the cotton bullworms, okay, this one normally again as the cotton bullworms, cotton bullworms. I'll explain what is cotton bullworm and all, okay, later. So second or uh, third major toxin is cry one AB, okay. This is again as the corn borer, okay, which, which we added in the maize, okay, which we added in the maize, which is again as the corn borer, okay, corn borer. So, as I mentioned, just remember these much things in the BT cotton. BT cotton means, BT means the slit student genesis, the bacteria, what we are using it, okay. And this majorly have the ability to kill three groups of three insect groups, that is lepidopterans, including tobacco, bedworm, and armyworm, coleopterans, which contain beetles, and depterans contain flies and mosquitoes, okay. BT cotton, sorry, uh, Bacillus thuringiensis produces this toxin in the form of protoxin, or I can call it as the inactivated toxin, okay, inactivated toxin. This inactivated toxin become an active toxin in the, sorry, in the pH of, in the pH of less, sorry, more than seven, that means in the alkaline pH. 
The toxins are produced by a gene called cryogen. Cryogens are majorly into three types, cry1AC, cry2AB, and cry1AB. Cry1AC and cry2AB are for the cotton, what we include in the cotton, it normally affects the cotton bullworms or the lepidopteran groups, okay? And the second one is the cry, sorry, cry1AB is normally, FA, sorry, we include in the maize and it affects the corn borer, okay? Those are the basics for understanding the BT cotton, okay? Now we'll see how the BT cotton works then, okay? There is a diagram, sorry to do that, okay? Let me, let me uh, take or multiply that one, okay? Yeah, so we'll go to the next page, yeah. So what happens here, okay? So in this particular case, we'll take a BT, uh, sorry, we'll take a cotton cell, okay? We'll take a cell, okay? Then what we do the cell, we will add the cry gene into the cell. We'll take a cotton cell. Remember, we took a cotton cell and we added a cry gene. Okay. And what we did is we got the recombinant cell, right? We got a recombinant cell. So this is the recombinant cell. So we took the cotton cell and we added our cry gene or integrated in and we created a transgenic or recombinant cell now. Okay, then what we use, we use a tissue culture. Okay, we use a tissue culture. In the tissue culture technique, what happens? Every cell have an ability, plants have an ability called a totipotency. Okay, what is totipotency? Write somewhere. Totipotency means, in a simple, very simple term, ability of single cell single cell to differentiate differentiate and form complete organism complete organism or the here it's a plant okay what i'm telling you is so totipotency means think about a single cell you keep a single cell and give it enough nutrition the single cell is forming the complete organism that is called totipotency. Differentiation means a single cell is giving parenchyma, colenchyma, sclerenchyma, all the different types of cell. Okay. So totipotency means ability of a single cell to differentiate and form a complete organism. Plant, all plant cells have the totipotency ability. So using that, we grow the single cell in the tissue culture technique and we grow these several hundreds of the plant. Okay. Then we planted it. Okay, we planted it. Then this particular cotton bullworm came here. Okay, so what happens when this particular bullworm comes? Normally, it will affect the BT uh, cotton. Okay, here it is given the corn. Anything is fine. Okay, in the corn or cotton. When you eat this plant leaves or this birds or this cotton and all, the complete things will be goes inside along with our crystallization or the BT toxin toxin crystals or the protoxin, okay? But in this bullworm, they have in their, uh, what is that, in their inside, okay? What they have is like an alkaline condition, okay? They have a alkaline pH in their elementary canal, okay? This is the elementary canal. They have a elementary canal. They have an alkaline pH here, okay? As I said that, it's a protoxin. This protoxin is converted into activated toxin. When? When it will convert into activated toxin, it will convert into activated toxin in the case of alkaline pH, in the case of the alkaline pH. Correct. So think about here. What happened? This BT cotton it ate and the toxin went inside. There's alkaline pH. Then it will become activated toxin. These activated toxins pierce the epithelium of the midgut. These activated toxins pierce or ruptures, okay, ruptures the epithelia, epithelia of midgut. It will rupture the epithelia of the midgut. So here is the midgut, this epithelial layer, right? It will rupture it. What happens when the rupturing happens? Do you guys think? Okay. 
when the rupturing happens, the swell, sorry, all the cells will get swollen because of the water intake. Okay, and because of this solely, uh, so, uh, because of the swelling of the mid gut or the alimentary canal, that particular uh, organism will die. Okay, that particular larva will die. Okay, I'm repeating. We incorporated our cryogen in our cotton cell and we created the plants within the tissue culture. When this bollworm or this larvae come and eating on our cotton plant, along with cotton plant leaves and its things, our protoxin also get digested, okay, sorry, ingested. In that particular fashion, these bollworms or the larva have alkaline pH in the elementary canal. So this protoxin convert into activated toxin. This activated toxin spears or create holes in the epithelium of midgut, which causes the swelling of the midgut and that particular larva will die. Okay, very simple understood, right? This is how it happens. Actually, initially, we before knowing the how to do the transgenic plants, we also know the Tesla stringencies. Initially, what we do is like we will take a powder, we'll mix it to the water, and we'll spray it on all the cotton plants. Okay, but that had a disadvantage. That means think about like you spent thousands of rupees and sprayed it on the plants, then the rain comes. What happens? Everything is gone. But when we discovered this one, think about however, however rain will come or it may be summer, whatever the season may be or whatever the case may be, the protoxin will be present throughout the cotton plant. That's why nothing will happen to the plant or nothing will happen to the toxin. It will be there only. Whenever the bullworm or any larva comes and eat it, then the worm will be die. Sorry, worm will die. So that will increase the plant growth and also the yield. Okay. Now there's a question for you guys. Okay. What happens if you guys eat the leaf? What happens if you guys eat the leaf? Do you guys die or like we will survive? Think about like there's a BT cotton leaf. I ate it. What happens to me? I will die or I will survive. What do you guys think? Yes. Correct. Right. We do survive. What is the reason then? Okay. As I told you, the toxins in the form of inactivated protoxin, right? Only in the alkaline pH, it will convert into activated toxins, right? So if we eat it, where it first go, it will go to our stomach. Stomach have an acidic condition, okay? High acidic condition. Next, if it goes to what is that? If it goes in the same form to our uh, intestine, then it may be dangerous. But think about here, it will go to our stomach. Stomach have a such a pH, okay. They all these crystals or crystal proteins will be get deactivated, okay. That's what happens. You won't get affected even though you ate a BT cotton leaf. Okay, understood? Any doubt in this? Any doubt in this? So we have one question for you guys. Okay, try to answer this one. Okay, what triggers activation of protoxin to active toxin of bacillus thuringiensis in ball worm? Okay, they're asking which particular thing triggers the protoxin to active toxin? Okay, so option A, acidic pH of stomach. Option B, body temperature. Option C, moist surface of mid gut. Option D, alkaline pH of the gut. This question is asked in NEET 2019, okay? I think you guys can answer now, right? This question is very simple, okay? I'm giving you 30 seconds of time and try to give the answer. Jenny Sangli gave the correct answer, awesome. What about others? Kushi gave the correct answer, great. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, okay. Dinosaur, we'll see what triggers activation of protoxin. They are saying, okay, what what uh, triggers uh, activation? Is it acidic pH of the stomach? No, they know don't have acidic pH. Is it body temperature? No. Is the moist surface? No. What's the correct answer? Correct answer is alkaline pH. Alkaline pH of the gut of the ball worm initiates or activates the protoxin to active toxins that actually kills them right the correct answer is alkaline ph of the gut as i said i think when you guys are solving the question only you are understanding right how uh, it need is not tough for need need a practice okay that always remember 
Neat is not tough. Okay, neat need a consistent practice. If you practice or if you write read well, okay, you will definitely clear clear the need easily. Okay. Next, we will see the second biotechnological application in the agriculture that is in the RNA interference technology to re reduce the pest resistance, sorry, pest plants. Okay. So, here we will take an example of plant of tobacco. Okay. Tobacco normally affected by a particular kind of the pest called as nematode. I think everyone know nematode or Phylum nematoda, right? The nematode name is Meliognina, 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 incognita, incognita, incognita. Okay. The name comes genus is obviously Meliognina. So you can see incognita name comes because when the this particular nematode affect the plant, you can't identify it. Think about this is the plant, these are the roots and these are the leaves, okay? This particular plant, sorry, this particular nematode affect the roots of the plant, okay? And it will start destroying the plants, okay? But above the shoot or in the above the ground, you can't see anything, right? Because everything happened in the root. But you will start observing that these plants are slowly turning into yellow color and they are started dying. Okay. You test the root, you test the soil, you given all the fertilizers, you given the water. The first thing that comes to our mind is probably water is less. But here given the water. Okay. Then we think that, okay, some nutrition is less. So then we uh, check the soil. So I have all the nutrition. Okay. Then we thought that, okay, probably bacterial or fungal disease. Then we take a part of the plant leaf and we tested there is no fungal or the bacterial disease. Then we come to know that when we remove the plant, we'll come to know small, small knots in the roots. Okay. These kind of knots, you can find it in the Fabaceae member, right? Uh, because they have a rhizobium in them. But these knots are not of the rhizobium. These knots created by a nematode. Okay, created by the nematode. This nematode infestation creating this plant to die or making this plant to die. And this is not observable above the ground. That's why we gave them something like incognito. I think you guys know, right? In the Chrome, there is an option go incognite, incognite mode. That means whatever you search or whatever you search, history will not be saved, right? History will not be saved. Similar here, that means you can't see what, if, if I give the mobile to you, you did, you search something and all. I can't see because you use the incognite mode, right? Same thing here. What happens here? It is below the ground is there. If you are looking above the ground, you can't see anything. Okay, like that. Okay, just remember the scientific name of that because it's important. Okay. Then we see what happens in this particular or what we did in this particular. In this particular technique or called RNA, uh, sorry, RNA interference, okay, we used, okay, we inhibited the activity of gene, we inhibit the, inhibit the activity of a gene, activity of a gene through, through, Production of production of both sense and antisense RNA, sense and antisense RNA. Okay, let me give you a little introduction regarding this. Okay, you know our body have a double stranded DNA, right? And our body you can only find single stranded RNA. Okay, so think about you take a cell and you introduce a double stranded RNA. Okay, it's a RNA. Then what happens? If you put double stranded RNA into any eukaryotic cell, that cell thinks that where is the double stranded RNA normally present? Double stranded RNA present in the virus, right? Uh, these eukaryotic cells start to think that, okay, double stranded RNA is there, that means it's a virus. Okay, they don't know like how it is, they think that it's a virus. So they create a mechanism which come and destroy this RNA. Okay, they will come and destroy this double stranded RNA. So that is why in our body, you can't find the double stranded RNA. You normally find single stranded RNA because if the double stranded RNA comes, our body will come and break it. Okay, come and break it. So how do you use this particular technology in creating a nematode resistant tobacco plant then? Okay, let me explain in a very simple way. Okay, 
first thing what we do is like we'll think about the nematode okay we'll think about the nematode and think about a very important gene important gene for the nematode okay think about uh, a plant what is the important enzyme for the plant which is a very important rubisco right why it is important because rubisco enzyme is the one which helps in the photosynthesis what happens if i remove the rubisco the plant will die right the plant will die correct right so think about same thing there are some genes for every organism which is very important without that genes the organism can't survive okay think about you remove the one gene which is responsible for the growth of the brain is the human will survive no right the same condition first we first we check which is the important gene for the nematode okay then what we do we extract its rna okay we extract its rna okay once we extract the rna what we do we run through a process and it will be single stranded rna what we get is okay we make the single stranded rna into a double stranded rna okay we make into a double stranded rna okay then what we do we add this double stranded rna into our tobacco cells okay our tobacco cells okay then what happens there is the story starts and explain this one more time i will find which is the culprit or the nematode then we'll check that what's the important gene for that and we'll extract the single stranded rna from that and we'll create a double stranded rna and we insert into tobacco cells i think about this is the tobacco cell okay so when i add a double stranded rna i told you right our body or any eukaryotic cell thinks that it's a virus so there is one enzyme molecule will come that's called as the dicer okay dicer which normally cuts this dicer come and attach to this double stranded rna okay and it will make it into small 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 pieces okay small pieces so or i can call it as this si rna okay small interfering rna okay so then what happens it will be present in all the cell okay it will be present in all the cell think about now a nematode came inside okay nematode come here and started eating the cell the plant okay started eating this plant okay started eating that plant then how the nematode eats nematode normally suck the cytoplasm okay it's normally suck the cytoplasm from the cells along with cells what is also going our small interfering rna or our si rna is also entering the body of the nematode okay inside the body of or inside the cell of the nematode what happens this small interfering rna initiate okay initiate a new complex because remember this is also still a double stranded rna only right it's still a double stranded rna even the nematode won't accept the double stranded rna what happens there is a new enzyme complex will come that is a risk complex okay if you want to know or if you want to know more the full form of risk is rna induced rna induced silencing complex silencing complex what this risk will do okay this particular risk complex will come and divide this double stranded into single stranded okay think about this is the rna okay what this will do this risk will come and attach here okay think about this the 5 prime to 3 prime 1 and this the 3 prime to 5 prime 1 okay it will divide into single stranded rna okay it's a separate rna it will separate okay it will make it separate and it will attach itself to the antisense rna okay so it will attach it to the this 3 prime to 5 prime rna okay so you may ask sir okay divide or destroy this rna that we understood but why it is attaching itself to this 3 prime to 5 prime rna what is the need of that it is very simple what it is doing is it is cutting the dna and it's also making sure that next time if the same rna comes how to identify right there should be some way to identify it right you know that these uh, these strands are complementary you know these strands are complementary so it will keep the 3 prime to 5 prime and uh, this one rna strand so if an any time if the 5 prime to 3 prime rna comes it can recognize it right it can recognize it so this is happens in the nematode 
but nematode not at all aware of any of this. So what it will do as usual, it wanted that it's important gene, right? It's important gene creates using a transcription, it will create a mRNA. What is the strand mRNA complementarity? mRNA, what is produced in this particular nematode or any plants, sorry, any organisms are the five prime to three prime end. But as you remember, this particular mRNA have an antisense, sorry, sense RNA. They have a sense RNA with a dicer here, three prime to five prime. So what this risk complex will do? Risk complex will go and attaches here, okay? This complex will go and attaches here and it will destroy the mRNA. Because there is no mRNA, you won't get any translation, no translation, no protein. Okay, so I'm repeating the complete thing once again for the people who got confused. I can understand it is a little confusing in the initial. There is no need to take tension. Okay, so we'll start with the first thing. What I have to do in the first phase, okay, in the first phase, I have to do is like, I have to select a nematode, which is affecting our plant. Then I have to think, which is the important gene for the nematode without that gene product, okay, the organism should not survive. Okay, think about Rubisco in the plant, similar kind of one gene. What I have to do, I have to extract the RNA that normally in the single strand, I have to convert into double strand and I have to insert that into the tobacco cells. Okay. Then using a tissue culture, I'm creating the all the plants. Okay. In the tobacco cell, what happens? The double stranded will double stranded RNA enter into the plant cell. As I already said, when double stranded RNA enter into the any eukaryotic cell, our body thinks that it's a virus. So it will initiate a complex called a dicer and it will cleave this double stranded RNA into small RNA pieces called as siRNA. For the people who want to know, I'm just explaining what is SI also. SI means small interfering RNA, small interfering RNA because it normally interferes in the different process, okay? Now, now what happens, a nematode comes and is drinking the cytoplasm, along with the cytoplasmic content, it's also drinking our small interfering RNA. Inside the nematode body, what happens? This small interfering RNA is come across with a new complex called RISC, RNA induced silencing complex. This will come and break this double stranded RNA into single stranded RNA and it will attach itself into the or it will attach a sense strand into the this particular risk complex or three prime to five prime or three prime to five prime rna into the risk complex okay so whenever this nematode want to produce a protein then what happens from the gene rna will come as soon as the RNA comes, essential RNA, the risk complex go and bind to this 5 prime to 3 prime end. Okay, I will write the codons here so you can recognize this me. Okay, 5 prime to 3 prime RNA, 3 prime to 5 prime, our risk complex RNA. So what it will do, after attaching to the RNA, it will cut the DNA or sorry, cut the mRNA or this mRNA will got destroyed. Because of mRNA destroyed, okay, there is no translation. There is no translation means there is no protein. There is no protein means what happens? That particular nematode will die. That particular nematode will die. Understood how it happens? So, is it right? So, whatever the nematode coming in trying to eat the uh, this one, what is that? Coming in trying to eat that particular tobacco, it's getting done. It, it can't survive. Okay, it can't survive because. Yeah, their important gene production, sorry, important protein production stopped, okay. This is how we created RNA interference technology, okay. I know in the book, it is given in a one single paragraph, but I also know that whatever given in the book, if you're trying to understand, you won't understand anything because the lines are good, but they get not given an explanation how it happens, okay. That's why I added a picture and I also explained it, okay. If you haven't understand the concept, please let me know in the chat box. I will repeat it one more time. Or if you have confusion in this, also you can ask me. I will also answer to that, okay. So that is about RNA interference in tobacco plants. 
Nice. I will take another one example here. Another example I want to take is of the another variety where we use the RNA interference that is in the flavor savored tomato. Okay. Flavor savored tomato. Flavor savored tomato means initially, as I mentioned the, uh, yesterday, ask your father or ask, uh, like, check your elder brothers or grandfathers. If you go to market and bring tomato, this tomato only lasts for like five days or like highest will be five days, okay? Then everything will start to drop out, everything will overripe. But think about now, okay? Go and bring any tomato from the like market and you keep it, okay? Without keeping it in fridge, it can go for 10 days, 15 days, okay? How is that happened then? Okay, this has happened because there is a particular enzyme, okay, there's an enzyme called as the polygalacto, polygalacto uranase, uranase, polygalacto uranase enzyme. What this polygalacto uranase enzyme will do? Okay, this polygalacto uranase enzyme is responsible for ripening of tomato. It is responsible for ripening of tomato. How it will ripen the tomato? By degrading the cell wall. Okay, by degrading the cell wall. How do you think the uh, ripening process will happen? Right, initially it will be very hard. Okay, think about mango, it will be very hard. But when it's near like ripening, it will become juicy, right? How the juice formation will happen? The cell wall will get destroyed, the cell wall will be removed. Then what happens without cell wall, it will become squishy, right? It will become squishy. This particular enzyme called bal, sorry, polygalactouronase enzyme, which is responsible for ripening of tomato uh, by degrading the cell wall. Okay, by degrading the cell wall. Okay, think about this, this tomato and all. Okay, so what we did here, we did the same thing, RNA interference. I think you guys caught it now, right? We identified the gene. Think about this is the DNA. Okay, this is the gene which is responsible for production of this enzyme. Okay, this is the gene which is responsible for the production of the enzyme. What happens in here? Normally, we'll get a mRNA, right? Normally, we'll get a mRNA in the form of 5 prime to 3 prime. But instead of we did, we removed this mRNA, we created a double stranded mRNA. Okay, we created a double stranded mRNA. Okay, double standard mRNA. Okay, double standard RNA. I can't call it the same RNA, double standard RNA. This is DNA. Okay, this is DNA. And we again inserted this RNA into the cell. Okay, this RNA into the cell. When it goes inside, what happens? Our dicer will come, it will break down into small piece. Then our risk complex will come and it will again divide into, into the small piece attaching itself. Now, this is the plant. Now think about what happens if this particular plant cell wants to create or wants to produce a polygalacturonous enzyme. Think about this is the DNA. Okay, this is the DNA. And this DNA using a transcription produced our mRNA. Okay, produced our mRNA. In the regular case, what should happen? This mRNA should undergo the translation process and we should get the, this enzyme and the ripening should happen. But in this case, what happens in this particular case, the risk enzyme go and binds to it, sorry, risk complex go and binds to it using the another strand and it will divide this mRNA into small, small pieces because of the small pieces or the destruction of the mRNA, there will be no enzyme because there is no translation, you won't get any enzyme. Because you are not getting enzyme, what happens? There is no degrading of the cell wall. Because there is no degrading of the cell wall, what happens? Ripening of stomata won't happen. Okay, ripening of stomata won't happen or it will become very slow. Okay, very, very slow. Understood? Understood? One second.
sorry sorry for the disturbance so what actually happened is like i thought of taking a screenshot instead of uh, i just use the short keys instead of the screenshot uh, it became uh, this one it went into the airplane mode okay so sorry, sorry for that okay so yeah so uh, so repeat when rna enters into the nematode okay i'll explain remember what happens this nematodes are very tiny tiny organisms so think about nematode phylum these are very tiny okay so what they do they will eat the cytoplasm they will drink the cytoplasm why they drink the cytoplasm why they won't eat the root because so think about if you eat the root you have to digest the root you have to digest all the protein all the other saccharides and all but if you drink the cytoplasm there is no need to do the any kind of the digestion process the kingdom no, sorry the phylum nematoda contains mostly parasitic parasitic organism where digestive system is very less developed or very less developed so what does nematode will do nematode will directly suck the cytoplasm because it directly takes the cytoplasm this all the cytoplasmic streams will directly enter here these small interfering dynamics are so small they can directly into the sorry they can directly enter into the cells of the nematode they can directly enter into the cells of the nematode whatever the process i am written here this won't happen in the digestive tract this happen in a cell this is the cells of nematode within the cells of nematode this will happen okay so once again i am repeating it okay so for the people who don't understand or who want me to repeat okay when the small interfering rnas si rna enter into the nematode cell think about this the nematode cell nematode cell what happens our risk complex will come our risk complex will come okay risk complex come and attaches risk complex come and attach to it i will write down here something like this 5 prime to 3 prime and 3 prime to 5 prime and our risk i'm changing the color so you can get it easily okay risk what this risk complex will do it will separate to 5 prime to 3 prime strand okay it will separate out the 5 prime to 3 prime and and it will include the 3 prime to 5 prime strand in itself okay it will include Three prime to five prime stand in itself. Okay. Okay. It will include the three prime to five prime in itself. Okay. So this is the common term. What is happens? Okay. But when the translation happens in the cytoplasm, okay. When the translation, think about this: the DNA from this particular DNA, we got the mRNA. Okay, this mRNA is again from the 5 prime to 3 prime. So that time what happens? Our risk complex come and attach to here, okay, along with this 3 prime to 5 prime strand, because these two are complementary. These two are complementary strands. Complementary strands. It will come and attaches. After attaching, what it will do? It will destroy this mRNA. It will destroy this mRNA into small, small pieces. Because small, small pieces, there will be no translation. That means no product. No translation. That means no product. It will be no product. Got it? Okay. So that's how it is. I think you guys got the thing. We have few minutes of time there's one question comes we'll see you guys will answer or not i'm just waiting okay the question is simple tobacco plant resistant nematode have been developed by the introduction of dna that produces tobacco plant resistant to nematode have been developed by introduction of dna that produced in the host cell both sense and antisense rna a particular hormone and antifeedant a toxic protein antifeedant a toxic protein what is the correct answer this question is asked in uh means 2012 that means it's not je means okay there are in certain states instead of calling as them as the common entrance test some of the state uh, exam call the uh, 12th examination after 12th examination common entrance test as the means okay in one of the state means this question is asked okay what's the correct answer exactly exactly 
correct Jamie Sangli, correct Kushi, what about other schools and other students? Correct Manilal. Awesome, awesome. Correct, right. The correct answer is both sense and antisense RNA. Because of sense and antisense RNA, it will form a double stranded RNA. This double stranded RNA is affected by Dicer and by the risk complex. So then what happens? Whenever the new mRNA strand will come, it will be get destroyed. Okay. So it's a simple go and read one time, you will get the understand. Okay. Uh, next in, we will learn about uh, biotechnology, how we will be utilized. Before that, I just wanted to add one more page regarding thing. Uh, another one example I just wanted to add here in the biotechnology in the agriculture. We just have to remember golden rice. Okay. Golden rice, what is the scientific name of the rice? Scientific name of the rice is Varaisa. Varaisa sativa. Varaisa sativa. Okay. So this golden rice contain a beta carotene. Okay. Beta carotene, which is actually the precursor, which is actually the precursor of the vitamin A. Okay. Or I can say that uh, inactive form of inactive form of vitamin A. Inactive form of vitamin A. Okay. This is one of the important, important thing. Okay, so golden rice. Okay, there is one more thing I just wanted to add. Okay, if we are creating the new, new or highly efficient kind of the products, okay, highly efficient kind of the product uh, with the high nutrient content is called as the molecular forming. Okay, it's called as the molecular forming. Let me write the molecular forming first, then I will write the definition. Molecular forming means molecular forming means production of production of value added production of value added products value added products using using transgenic crop using transgenic crops so if you use the or uh, if you use the uh, value added products, sorry, if you create the value added products using transient crops, this is called as the molecular forming. Okay, it is called as the molecular forming. Okay, so for the people who are here now, I just wanted to add two to three things. Okay, remember uh, in this class, we are halfway in the biotechnology second chapter. Biotechnology first chapter, chapter test will happen next week Sunday. Okay, next week Sunday. So please read biotechnology first chapter and also revise the biotechnology second chapter. Today's class, we completed biotechnology application in agriculture. In the tomorrow class, we will complete the biotechnology applications in the medicals and also we will also see ethical issues. Okay, so I'm sending the notes in the coordinators groups and student groups. Okay, if you want to see anything or if you left out anything to write or anything, please refer that. Okay, I already shared the module in the coordinator group last week only. If you haven't got it, please ask your coordinator and take up a Xerox and try to solve the questions. Okay, if you have any questions, you can ask me now. We, we still have two minutes of time. Okay, otherwise, you can uh, send it in a WhatsApp group or please let your coordinator know. Okay, coordinators will uh, send the message in the groups so we can reply. Okay, or if you want me to explain any particular topic, especially, okay, that also you can request so that will carry on from the next classes. Okay. Okay, guys, then it's nice interacting with you. So we can close today's class here. Okay, we'll meet once again uh, next week, Saturday. Okay. Okay, then bye bye. Don't forget about your examinations. Sorry, uh, chapter test next week.